So how does this uh, model work? So when you open a page, so here we have the page for the USA, uh, you see first uh, tables of results. So where do these results come from before I explain what they are? Um, they come from simulations which are done um, below. And so you have a policy scenario here and you have on the right hand side, you have the benchmark scenario and you have the comparison between the two here. So a typical scenario has uh, a lot of uh, results. So the new people who are infected, those who are currently infected, the proportion of the population who has been infected, the proportion of contagious people in the population, uh, the overwhelming of hospital capacity, the people who are cured, uh, the new deaths, the additional deaths due to the overwhelming of the healthcare system, the total uh, accumulated death, uh, the reproduction number, which is a key number for uh, understanding the dynamics of a pandemic. So it's the number, the average number of um, a, per a contagious person will infect during its uh, time of uh, infection. Um, and um, here is the speed at which uh, the deaths uh, double. Um, and we have uh, precautions spontaneously taken by people when they reduce their contacts to avoid between being um, contaminated. And these two columns are the columns that uh, users should typically play with. So you can change the uh, lockdown policy, which is aimed at reducing contact between people. And you can introduce testing. And testing is measured here as the percentage of uh, reduction in the contagiosity of people, right? So um, uh, how many people are tested and then uh, uh, put in isolation? or uh, how much time reduction there is in their period at which they are in circulation and contaminating other people. Um, you have the uh, graphs which describe for each of the scenarios uh, the currently infected people and uh, the cumulative death. And the graphs at the top here describe the, the scales uh, for both for the policy scenario and the benchmark so that you can compare the results for these two uh, scenario. So let me go back to the scenario. You have on the left hand side here, the first column gives you data about characteristics of the country, uh, population, uh, hospital capacity, usual death rate, um, the uh, inequalities in income and inequalities in life expectancy, and so on. And um, you have parameters that uh, you can change. So for instance, a key parameter is the contagion uh, rate, the contagion rate. So uh, what's the uh, probability of being contaminated when you meet someone who is infectious? Um, you have the number of people, people meet uh, on average in a week and so on. Um, and so these parameters can be changed to see what happens under different assumptions. Um, every line in, uh, in this table, every row is, an, is a week. And so we follow the evolution of the situation for two years. Um, so you can change the parameters, you can change the policy uh, variables, and then you see the results. So what are the results? The results um, include the uh, total number of deaths from the virus and from the overwhelming of the healthcare system. So you have other people who die because they are less uh, well taken care of by the healthcare system, the number of life years lost, and the number of quali so quality adjusted life years lost. Um, and there is some uh, economic and social evaluation. So the economic evaluation attributes a value to a death or a value to a, a year of life that is lost, and a value to the uh, qualities that are lost. So qualities include the lower quality of life that people have during the time of sickness and after sickness. The GDP loss is due to the reduction of activity linked to uh, contact reduction, uh, the lockdown policies. And finally, there is an evaluation of the social loss, and that takes account of the impact on people's lifetime uh, uh, well-being, taking account both the loss of years of life, of longevity, and the loss of income. Okay, so once you've done all that, you can look at the results in terms of the curves and see what the policy. So here is an example for the US where we do a few periods of lockdown 
that break the wave um, and uh, that reduce the number of deaths considerably. And in addition, uh, the policy includes uh, an assumption about introduction of testing. So this is the aggressive period of lockdown in the beginning. We are in the middle of it as I'm recording that now. And then testing uh, occurs and hopefully we'll reach a point where we can uh, reduce contagiosity by 50%. This is a bit uh, optimistic. So you have a few uh, couple of repetitions of uh, partial lockdown policies later on to uh, break the wave again. Um, if we don't do anything, we have these two waves and we have two waves here because people spontaneously take precautions. So there is a sort of spontaneous lockdown when people see many deaths around them. So the first wave comes, but we still have people who are not immunized. And so a second wave can arrive after that because of the susceptibility of these people. So that's how it works. And uh, feel free to send comments uh, and to uh, uh, to change the model as you wish. Uh, you can create a lot of variants. An Excel spreadsheet is uh, rather easy to manipulate.